Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Ever is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hello friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited to introduce you today to Taylor Prince. Taylor, welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you so much for being here. I would love for you to tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about mom life and yeah, what you're focusing on right now. Okay, so I'm a mom of two. I have two daughters. They're two and a half and seven months. So my household is always going, going, going crazy busy. I kind of have like a schedule that I try to keep them on just because I have a schedule. I'm a super organized person. I have a daily schedule that I go off of. So that is just something obviously that I try to stick to. But we all know as a mom that... (laughs) We always get off schedule most of the time. So it's kind of just chaotic here all the time, but I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I love being a mom. It's one of my favorite things. And it's funny because for a while there, back when I was younger, I'm, I'll be 30 this next month. But when I was younger, I didn't think that I would ever get married or have kids. It was so crazy. And then it all just happened at once. And I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> okay, like God's doing his thing, man. I'm just like, but I was so excited. Like it's been a whirlwind, but I would not have it any other way. I love being a mom. <laughs> Yes, being a mom is definitely very rewarding. And like you were saying earlier, it can be a little chaotic and we try to be organized and be on schedule. So I would love for you to speak on how you make that work for you, how you make being on schedule work, because like you said, it's not always easy. Yeah. So I usually try to plan out my schedule a week in advance. I schedule work times because I am a stay-at-home mom and I do work from home. So I have like about two sessions a day. I usually have one first thing in the morning. And also I fit in a a 6am workout, which is also crazy Mm -hmm. because, you know, working out is always been a passion of mine too. I did boxing when I was younger. And so working out has always been like a big thing for me too. So I do that in the mornings, but then I have like a small work session from like seven to eight because my kids usually sleep till about 830, which some parents don't get that. And that's crazy because I can't even imagine, but that's kind of where my schedule is. And then I do school with my two and a half year old. So I make lesson plans. I used to be a preschool teacher And I did three and four year olds and I taught them. So I know how to make lesson plans. We do calendar, we do art, we do sensory, just a little bit of everything (laughs) just to tack on to everything else that I already do at home. (laughs) But she loves it. She's going to probably be advanced when she goes to school and she'll be bored out of her mind, but she likes it. So I try to, you know, stick to it. And then I have nap time. And that's the other work session that I kind of have from 1230 to 230. So that's really, I mean, obviously things happen. We do toddler times once a week at the library. That's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And like I said, my schedule varies because if they don't sleep one night or if they, you know, just have an off day, we just kind of have to work around that. But that's part of being a mom. You just got to go with the flow. (laughs) Yes, I love that you're saying that you make that schedule a week in advance and yeah, you make it a priority. That's the biggest thing I'm hearing is you make that schedule a priority and you give yourself room to be, to let it flow. And I love that you're speaking to homeschooling your two and a half year old. That is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy because when I first told my family, they were like, okay, that's kind of weird. She's only two. 
But I was like, yeah, but she gets bored at home. Like, I don't want to stick her in front of the TV all the time. And I know that sometimes for parents, it's easy for them to just be like, okay, go watch TV. But for me, like, I grew up outside when I was younger. I played outside all the time when it was nice outside. And, you know, obviously this summer we're going to go everywhere, the zoo and the pool. And they have like a petting zoo around here too. So we'll probably do that. But my kids both love being outside. So it's just hard to like keep them enclosed, especially during like this winter time. It's been so crazy here. I live in Kansas and the weather has been bipolar. Like we had like 80 degrees yesterday and now it's 34 with a chance of snow. So it's literally just like, it's so crazy. But yeah, homeschooling is, I mean, I don't plan on homeschooling, like continuing to homeschool, but you know, it's just one of those things where you have to play by ear because I don't know how the world is going to be in, you know, a year from now. And it's kind of scary to think about, but you just got to kind of keep moving and do what I do and (laughs) just do it. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. And yes, I love what you're speaking on because it's so true. Sometimes we want that ease so bad that we're going to stick our kid in front of the TV, but doing that little extra, doing that little extra, like you were saying, they get bored at home. And so keeping their minds going is such a motivator for you. It Mm -hmm. sounds like. Well, and it, It makes nap time easier, too, because if she is, you know, making her brain think and she's actually doing things, it keeps her busy enough to where she does get tired and she does take a nap Mm -hmm. in the afternoon. So that's always a plus. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I love. Yes. I love that so much. How is that for you working from home? Because I know there's mamas that are listening that are like, I would love to be able to work from home. So what did that journey look like for you and making that work? Sometimes it's literally just fly by the seat of your pants. I mean, I have a schedule, but a lot of times I have to work around it. We had a vacation a couple of weeks ago. And so my work schedule kind of, it didn't fall off. It just had to be in smaller increments mm-hmm. because my kids just needed more attention that week because we had been gone all week and they just wanted mom all day long. <laughs> so it's just one of those things, you know, I have a schedule, but you just have to be flexible. And I've learned that as a mom, like, and let me tell you being flexible. Like when I was younger, I was late to everything. Like I was never on time and being a mom now I'm like, okay, that's never going to happen. Like I'm never going to be early to anything. Like I try, but it's, it's difficult. And my husband is a truck driver. Luckily he's local. So he is home at night, but he does work really long hours. And so right now, keeping the kids alive is what I focus on the most, (laughs) obviously. So I just, you know, I have long mornings and I have long evenings and just that nap time is just like, sometimes I don't even work. Like, I'm just like, I just need a breather. And I feel like as moms, we all, like, we can all relate to that because, you know, even if you have one kid or five kids or three kids, like, it's still, it's still struggle. You still have to like really you want to focus on them, but you also want to have me time. Like you have to have some time to yourself. So I don't know if that really answers your question, but <laughs> yes, yeah, so introduce us to your sweet angel. <laughs> so this is Emerson. She's my two and a half year old. My seven month old is slowly crawling over here as well because she's learning to crawl now. So she'll be over here shortly, probably. I'm sure. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, this is Emerson. She's my two and a half year old. Yep. And Just I just love, 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 <laughs> love seeing Emerson on the screen because as a mom, oh, it lights me up seeing this because this is what we need to do. This is how it, this is life. This is yeah. real life. It really is. Yes. And <laughs> Yes, I remember at the beginning of starting my podcast, I was the same thing. I My husband works, and so I had my child, and everybody was saying to me, like, good job doing it with your kid in tow, but so many moms are doing yeah. are doing that, and yes. it's so good for us to show that. So kudos to you, and <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so what do you like to do, Mama, on your free time? Because you are talking about the importance of – that self-care piece and take care of yourself. I sometimes like to read books. My big thing that keeps me going is working out. Obviously I do beach body on demand. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that, but that's what I do. And I 
just restarted their boxing program that they have because I love boxing. <laughs> I did it for a couple of years and I just can't really get away from it. So that's what I do in the mornings. And then I kind of just work and that's all I do. I take care of my kids and I work and I work out. I do listen to motivational podcasts sometimes because sometimes if I'm feeling down, I need something to pick me back up. So motivational podcast is where it's at. I don't really have any recommendations right now. I've just been kind of listening to like mom podcasts and I can't remember the one that I just started listening to, but it's a really good one. (laughs) And yeah, that's, that's really all I do. I mean, I don't really have like a ton of like other activities. Sometimes I read some motivational books. What is motivating you right now? So right now I have this challenge in my work that I'm doing basically and it's it's an expenses paid trip that I'm trying to earn so that's really my motivation right now but I also have to take a step back and just consider you know these are people that I'm trying to have like real genuine relationships with and conversations with and I'm still learning. Like I said, I just started the business side of things. It's not an MLM, but I've never done an MLM or anything like that. The multi-level marketing, anything like that. So I'm still like learning the important pieces of my business as far as, you know, talking to people and taking the time to get to know them as a person before you're just like, oh, by the way, because I I just can't, like, I can't do that. I have to get to know someone before I like share them. I do want to share with them what I'm like doing, but I like to get to know people and just talk to people and, and learn what their need is. Like if they even have a need for that, cause sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't have a need for that. But if with everything going up in price right now, the inflation has increased. Like for me, the shopping club was, a, it's just a good opportunity for me to share with people. This is Hadley. This is my seven month old. <laughs> Hadley, <laughs> you sweet angel. <laughs> Welcome. So, yes. So I love that you said that you have a motivation because I think that's what, that's the guiding light that keeps us going, right? That has us something to shoot for, something to reach for. And so how have have you overcome some of the struggles to get to the place where you can start this business for yourself and your family? So it's definitely been a struggle sometimes. I am lucky enough to have my aunt doing it with me. She has definitely been a motivation like for me. I have an amazing mentor that is above her, that's with her, that does her, the trainings and stuff for us. And it's just been good for me to like get to know people and learn from the people that have been doing this for years and years. Like it's definitely, you know, I have my ups and downs days. Like this morning, I struggled a little bit because we're at the end of March and I just, my didn't quite hit my goal of where I wanted to be in my business this month. So, you know, you just have to like configure and figure out, okay, this is what I need to do for the next month. Just kind of rework your goals and write down what you need to do and, and get it done. I mean, at the end of the day, you did what you could and you just kind of have to move on to the next day. I know a lot of times that's hard for people, especially as a mom, because you feel like you're doing so much already. And you are like you're taking care of kids and you're doing the laundry and you're keeping the dishes clean and try to keep my living room clean. But that's like a once every evening. I got to clean it up because it never, it's never clean ever. But you know, you just got to take a step back. You got to give yourself some grace because you're doing a lot as a mom. <laughs> and I'm slowly learning that. Yes. And so that mindset piece is huge. Yes. And giving yourself that grace and knowing that every day you're not going to always hit your goal, but Mm -hmm. like you said, going for the next one and Mm -hmm. keeping yourself pumped up in that way. And so I would love to know, do you have a practice that you do to get your mindset to this place where you can just keep looking at the next thing and moving forward? So usually what I do, and it's what I did this morning, I called my aunt and I Mm -hmm. just talked to her because she's been doing this for four years. Mm -hmm. And so she's been in a lot longer than me. And she just, she always knows the right things to say to me. And so for me, it's just reaching out to her and just kind of, she's reiterating all of my things. She's like, you're doing the right things. You know, you just, you got to keep at it. You can't give up because I feel like a lot of times people do, they, 
they, they, even if they try to take on too much, like they have a goal that's not achievable, you have to set goals that, you know, you know, you can achieve. Mm -hmm. If you set your goal too high, you're going to fall. If you set it too low, you know, you still may not make it, but you have to just keep moving forward and never give up. And that's, that's what I'm learning in this business. You know, you can't give up for me. Like I want to share this with these families and I want to help them see that, you know, even if it's not for them right now at this moment, like it may be down the line, you just never know. And it's, it's definitely a timing thing as well, because you have to think about, okay, there's a lot going on right now. They may just have, you know, other things going on that they just don't have time. And that's okay too. Like for me, like either calling my aunt and talking to her, or I listen to a podcast, they just kind of bring me back up to speed of where I where I need to be. So that's what I did this morning. And now I'm like all pumped to work this afternoon and reach out to people. So I'm kind of excited. And the podcast was getting me super excited too, because I've never been on a podcast before. So like for me, this is a great opportunity to just meet new people and get new connections and stuff. So I was super excited about this. I'm glad you asked me to be on it. Yay! Oh my gosh. I, I so appreciate you, Taylor, and sharing with us about this working from home and starting this new business and keeping it real because at the end of the day this is what it is and especially yeah. when you're when you're starting out and I love the vulnerability of you sharing that you have these struggles that you have to overcome and reaching out and getting support for that is it's what's huge and yeah oh yeah so I applaud you and I think <laughs> that is yes that is amazing thank you that. So the reason I was so drawn to you and asked you to be on the podcast is because the fact that you're talking about toxic free living. And I know now that my little man is getting into everything yeah. that that is a topic that I'm definitely interested in. And what made that decision for you to create your home to be toxic free? Yes. Okay. So I actually started with another company four or five years ago. It's been a while. And it was just essential oils. Um, that was just me getting into it and trying it out because I have to try things out before I commit to anything. I'm a visual person. I like to see things. I like to try things before I like get my whole foot in the door and just start doing it all. So with this company, my aunt approached me about it and she was like, you know, it's a toxic free company. They're all natural products. So you just need to try it because you have kids and, you know, it would be a good thing for you to just try. And I was like, you know what, whatever, I'll do it. So I signed up because they were having $1 memberships for the year. And so I was like, that's a really good deal. Like, why would I not do that? <laughs> so I enrolled and I started using the products and I loved them. Like I just fell in love with them and I liked all of them. And so they had this challenge come out last month. And I was like, Hey, what is this? And my aunt explained it to me. And she was like, all right. I was like, all right, let's go. We're doing this. <laughs> like I just kind of jumped in head first and it's definitely been crazy, but I'm glad that I'm taking this step in my business to make connections and meet new people and share because it's a passionate, it's passionate. I'm passionate about it. And I'm passionate about these products. And I think that sure it's not for everyone, but Anyone who has kids, I would say at least check into it because it's it's worth it. It's worth not worrying about, oh, I have toxic chemicals under my sink. So if my kid gets into them cleaning stuff, like, I don't know what I'll do. I'll have to call a doctor. Or, like, it's just, it's nice knowing that I don't have to worry about them getting into anything yeah. because it's all safe for it's them. All safe. As a mom, that is like you said at the beginning, keeping our kids alive. Yes. <laughs> We're talking on creating this business and how are you finding yourself connecting with people and building these relationships? And what advice can you give to, let's say, a mom who is wanting to, to be like, be that work from home mom life? Yeah. So I would say you're going to regret, regret it if you don't at least give it a try. Because you're going to have your days where it's a struggle, but you're also going to have your days where you succeed. And I would just say, if you're not, if you haven't tried it yet, give it a try, but pick something that you are passionate about. Don't, you know, just pick the first thing that 
you think that you might like or you think that you like and then you know a couple weeks or a couple months down the road you're like oh i just i don't want to share it because i'm not passionate about it it has to be something that you enjoy and you like and you you purchase yourself even because sometimes i feel like people they want to work from home but then they're like okay well i need to do this but i don't even i don't even have the products or i don't have this or i don't have that but like you can't really give a testimonial if you yourself haven't tried it. Like I would encourage moms, if you haven't tried it, find something that you're passionate about and share it with the world. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I'm passionate about this. So I'm constantly reaching out to people and it's different because like some people, I'm an extrovert, I'm a people person. So I love reaching out to people and talking to people, but like, it's crazy because my husband is the opposite and he'd be fine with not talking to anyone all day. So it's just one of those things where you just, you don't even necessarily have to be a people person. You just have to be willing to put in the effort and put in the work and just know that you will see results. It may not be in your time frame. It's so true that you have to be passionate and fired up and lit up about it in order to be able to connect with people yes. in that way. Absolutely. 100%. And I would love to hear a little bit of your backstory that even is this when you became a mom, that was when it was like, this is going to be the shift for me? Or have you always known that you wanted to, to eventually get here? I've always wanted to be a stay at home mom. So for me, yes, it was, you know, once I started having kids, I wanted to be home. I didn't want to miss anything. I didn't want to be one of those moms that was like missing, you know, when they get older, missing soccer games or sports games or, you know, events at school. Like I've always wanted to be that room mom where I like plan all the parties and stuff <laughs> like that for me. Like I would love that. Like I'd love to do that. Like I can't wait for Emerson to go to school because <laughs> I'm going to be like, sign me up. <laughs> but yes, I've always kind of known. I didn't know what my occupation would be as a stay at home mom. I didn't know what I would do. And, you know, my husband's making enough now to where I don't have to work, but me working, I mean, it's, it's showing my kids that I can still be a stay at home mom, but I can still work and still make it work. I feel like moms are scared to jump into that because they're afraid they're going to fail, but you're only going to fail if you don't try. You have to really be willing to put in the work. And I know it's hard. And I've literally stayed up like till midnight one night I stayed up like working on my social media and stuff for my stuff because I you know ran out of time during the day like I just had too many things going on and my kids needed me and sometimes you have to do that you have to make sacrifices to succeed and you will eventually I like I'm one of those people where I'm like okay I want results now and I'm so bad about that like I am learning patience with this program because it's not a quick fix. It's not something that's going to be a oh, one and done. Like you have to work at it and you have to keep working at it. And I've definitely learned that they're doing this. So I'm kind of glad that this is where I'm at right now because I'm learning a whole new thing about me as a person. Like I'm learning myself. Yes. And I feel like that is the best work that we'll ever do. Apart from being a mom, I feel like, and a wife and all the things, <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. like that working on us and being the best version of ourselves for ourselves is the best way that we can enhance, flourish and bloom and yes. be able to help the people in our lives. Yes, totally agree. <laughs> yes. And so that self-acceptance piece for the mamas listening, that is the big umbrella of Make Life Fun Show is that self-acceptance piece. So I would love for you to speak on that. Yeah. So I did not used to be in a good headspace. I will be honest with you. I went through a depression, not even it was before I had kids, because I was just I was in a bad place. And I have come a long way. I will say that much. It's definitely been a struggle. But you know, you have to want to be a better version of yourself. You have to try every day. It's, it's going to be a day by day thing. You can't, no one's perfect. Like, and I had to realize that like I was trying to do the most and I was trying to do this and I was trying to do that and I got so overwhelmed and then I got stressed and then I got depressed and it was not a good time for me and my family can vouch I was a hot mess <laughs> I was a hot mess for a while and actually until I met my husband I was struggling 
And then I met my husband and it kind of just flipped 180. Like he was just, I knew he was the one right off the bat. We had a quick engagement. We got married within a year and then two kiddos. So it was definitely strange for me at first, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. You know, self-acceptance is hard for anyone. If you're a mom, if you're a dad, if you're a single parent, even like you got to give yourself grace. It comes back to grace. Like you have to just keep working at it. I just take my days one day at a time. I plan a week in advance. Sure. But it's a day by day thing because you never know what's going to happen. You never know how your day is going to go. You have to just give yourself grace. I try to do like mani petties once a month too, just to like give myself some relaxing time by myself because that's, it's not self-acceptance, but it, for me, it's like a self by myself. I'm by myself for two hours. So I will be able to just relax and just kind of take a step back from my life. I would encourage people, if you have someone in your corner that you can talk to, Mm -hmm. definitely reach out because I didn't for a while. I wasn't super close to my mom is what I am now. And I had one close friend and she was actually the one that helped me get through everything. And I'm still best friends with her to this day. Like we don't talk a lot. We both have kids. We have life going on, but I go to church with her. And so I see her once a week and that's all I need really. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I don't know if anybody's spiritual, but I go to church every week and it definitely helps me too in my headspace as far as doing life with my family and having people that can support you through your journey is definitely a plus also. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that journey with us of being low and picking yourself back up and reminding us that we have to keep going and that it is possible. Your story is very inspirational. Thank you you. for sharing it. Yes. So I would love for our listeners to know where they can support you where they can go cheer you on and watch this journey and this beautiful, beautiful life and this business that you're growing, how they can support you. And I have a Facebook. It's Mrs. Taylor Prince. No, it's not. It's Taylor Janae Prince. And then I have an Instagram that's Mrs. Taylor Prince. And those are my social media feeds. And then I have an email. If you want to learn more, it's Taylor j2692 at gmail.com that's where you can contact me or facebook messenger i respond fairly quickly on there too so that's that's where i'm at (laughs) yes wonderful yes so before we go i always like to give you the floor to speak after having this conversation is there anything on your heart that you feel called to share with the mamas listening I literally would encourage moms, if you haven't tried the stay-at-home mom gig, find something that you like, find something that you're passionate about. I wasn't super passionate about the stay-at-home mom thing. I was, but I wasn't sure because I felt like it was going to be hard. And it is hard. Even if you don't have kids and you're starting out in a new business, like it's crazy. It can get crazy. And I had a kiddo when I first started my stay-at-home business, so it was a struggle, but I highly, highly encourage you to try it. Step out of your comfort zone. Oh, that's such a great message of encouragement. It's been my pleasure having this conversation with you and sharing this space. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you invited me. I was very happy to get an invite and I loved being on your show. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcast places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. 
follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.